So here we go, we've got a lot to go over in this video, including official news recently posted by the Outriders team. It looks like we're going to be getting more news very soon as to what's going on with patches and that sort of thing. So actually, there might be another Outriders video out today, so keep your eyes peeled on the channel for sure. Now, we're also going to be talking about a very controversial issue or discussion why Outriders should embrace the live service model ASAP. You guys got to let me know your opinion on this one. I love reading your comments, so send your comments down below, and I'm going to highlight your comments later in this video, of course. Uh, now, also, it looks like players are really embracing melee-centric builds in the in-game. This is really interesting stuff. We're going to talk about that as well, plus some new discussions from around the Outriders community with some pretty viable concerns about the future of the franchise. So, let's do this. Let's dive in. Hey, everyone, what's happening? Overworld Games here. Hope you're doing good. And let's see what's happening with Outrider, shall we? First of all, starting with this official update right here. Some reassurance from the Outriders team. They go on to say this. We're pleased to confirm that testing for our upcoming patch to address the inventory wipe issue is continuing to progress as planned. This situation continues to be our key focus, and we are aiming to share more news very soon. So, the more news very soon bit means that that could be dropping at any moment. They've been working on this patch over time, so I'm expecting some sort of news and release date for the patch and also when they're going to be doing the uh, restorations for inventories that have been wiped, uh, which will be happening. Of course, remember, if you do have your inventory wiped, you won't have to do anything. It'll just be restored one day, and I'll have news for you guys as to when that's happening. All right, now let's get into this... Uh, controversial discussion right here shall we it says why outriders should embrace the live service model asap oh boy this should definitely be interesting for sure so let's take a look this comes from uh, collider they says say this outriders the new rpg shooter from people can fly and square enix has been out in the world for just about two weeks now millions of players have traveled to the gorgeous and perilous alien world of anak to venture out beyond the colony border and explore the planet's mysteries okay we know this but back here on Earth, shiny new games are vying for players' attention every week, if not every day. Is this not the truth? It says, can Outriders' approach of delivering all the content they had to offer in the box day one keep the game going long enough to establish itself as a success? In my opinion, it's already a success, even with the issues. Uh, now they say this, or will the teams behind the uh, scenes... Uh, need to deliver a roadmap at the very least to keep players from jumping ship should they embrace the 21st century state of the gaming industry and turn outriders into a live service game what do you guys think <laughs> that's the biggest question and they've already talked about ideas it seems like they want to do big expansions but it would be cool i will say this to get some sort of roadmap down the road uh, I know that's a little bit redundant, but yeah, that would be cool to get some sort of insight as to what they potentially would be planning. Even if it's like four big expansions and it's not exactly uh, going to be, you know, this live service thing. I would love to see, you know, some sort of roadmap. But right now they're focused on fixing the game. But anyway, let's keep going with this article because it's definitely fascinating. It says lots of questions there, but... Before we answer them, or attempt to, it's worth keeping in mind that people can fly and Square Enix might already count Outriders as a success. That metric depends on just what they wanted out of the game's rollout. They're aiming for decent sales numbers and sizable player base right out of the gate. This and nothing more down the road, they could argue in favor of calling Outriders success. Yeah, I think they could in that way. And since they were rather vocal about not marking the game as a looter shooter or a game of service, on the surface, it seems as if they would be happy with early numbers, happy enough to walk away completely and let the game stand on its own, which they are not going to do, you know. Uh, so I don't think that's in their plans at all. Uh, now, let's see what they say here. They say, but there are a couple of things complicating that approach. The fact that even solo single player campaigns can't be enjoyed offline and that the hardworking team behind the scenes has been toiling around the clock to make sure the Outriders experience is the best it can be for the most people possible that sounds like a live service game to me and that's that's what i was saying like it's already acting like a live service game in some ways don't get me wrong uh, i don't 100 percent support live service games but at the same time i get that if you absolutely love the universe you're in or the gameplay mechanics you would want the game to be supported so i do get that it's just that a lot of live service games fell especially recently 
Now, the article goes on to say this. Sure, if you launch a game in 2021 and beyond, especially a game that required online components, you're basically expected to support it for as long as it's viable. The fact in and of itself doesn't mean that Square Enix and people can fly plan to do this in the long run. However, if you're going to put all the effort into maintaining a game with live service fixes, you might as well run it as a live service game. They're already doing this just without the benefits of new content roadmaps, potentially lucrative microtransactions, and a healthy marketplace. They're basically doing the work of a live service game without the upside and with the Outriders player base expected to dwindle rather than grow the further we get from the release date, that pain point is also going to grow unless they switch to a live service approach. Now, uh, you know, I always think of, you know, that some of this is true and some of it's false, in my opinion, with what they're saying in this article. Because I think to major franchises like Monster Hunter, you know, they just recently released, what was it called? Monster Hunter Rise, I believe it was. And it's been such an immense success with how uh, they have been actually running that game. I think all they need to do uh, with Outriders is actually look uh, to Monster Hunter World for sure. Uh, now, let's keep going, shall we? Now, they go on to say this. Currently, and as of this writing specifically, Outrider Steam players peaked at a little over 72,000 in the last 24 hours, good enough for 15th place overall. The game's concurrent players on Steam put it in the company of similar games like Destiny 2 and Warframe, but well behind the platform's top five titles like CSGO, Dota 2, GTA 5, Apex Legends, and PUBG. Other titles, many of which have been out for significantly longer than Outriders two weeks, continue to enjoy a healthy player base like Valhalla, Rust, and Team Fortress 2. So, you know, they, they haven't really, um, when it comes to people can fly in Square Enix, they haven't ruled out a battle pass as well, something to uh, keep players going. And a lot of you guys cringe, you know, when I say battle pass, and I get it, like, don't worry, I, I completely understand. Now, they say this as well, those two weeks worth of Steam data for Outriders is also good enough to give us a working daily average of 71K and a peak player base of 125K at... As of a point comparison, Destiny 2, which has been out for three and a half years now, has averaged 72k daily players since the fall of 2019. The average has obviously gone up and down over the last year and a half, though the title peaked at more than 20, 229k, easily more than doubling Outrider's debut peak. When did that peak hit? October 2019, paired to the re-release of Destiny 2 as the free-to-play live service model. So I'm going to say something about this. Yeah, we're all fixated on live service model, but one thing that I think is super important nowadays is just to keep a good developer around and not to uh, have, you know, them in an over crunch with, uh, you know, crunch time and overworking and also doing too much with a game too soon. Right now, what People Can Fly has successfully done, uh, for the most part, they've had some <laughs> missteps with this game for sure, but I think they have a happy player base in some regards and people will come back if they continue this approach they would come back for an Outriders 2 and I think that is saying something and I think that alone is their mission statement uh, from people can fly now let's continue on and talk about how players are punching their way through the end game so yeah players are really embracing um, you know, melee builds, which is really, really cool. If we check out this article from Eurogamer, they go on to say the following. Even more interesting, the melee skill and the melee builds that have emerged around it is more powerful powerful with the much maligned Devastator class. This class is ostensibly a tank that some Outrider players are kicking from random co-op groups because of a perceived lack of damage per second potential during expeditions. The in-game missions that revolve around the completing map as quickly as possible. But some Devastator players are using a melee build to power through the in-game and are even able to hold their own solo. So he came across a few Devastator melee build guide videos that are great at explaining how this all works. Essentially, you want to use the bottom skill tree to boost the effectiveness of the melee and mods and reduce the cooldown of your melee skill by 50%, for example, and armor stats, anomaly power, status power, and cooldown reduction that tap into the skill. Now, melee counts as a skill in Outriders, which is something that I didn't realize, and it's viable because of it. Uh, I noticed this also, by the way, if you invest in the um, lower skill tree for the Trickster, your melee skill takes a real boost. Is it anything in comparison what you can do 
with damage with weapons? No, but you know, it would be interesting to see if they buff some of these skills, if you can really start getting some melee centric builds. In fact, you know, speaking about this melee topic right now, I wouldn't mind to see uh, something that is more melee centric in the future as an actual class. I think that would be really, really cool. They had a class like that in Anthem as well, which was really neat. They were like a guerrilla style warfare, very quick, nimble class. That would be something that I would absolutely love to see in the future for Outriders. Let me know uh, what you guys think. Now, the article furthermore says uh, the following right here. It says, Melee on the Devastator also adds the bleed effect to all it touches. This is particularly powerful in combination with bleed effect mods. There are two melee options in the game. The basic punch, which does damage and arc in front of you, and a sprint and leap and smash melee, which does damage all around you. Interesting right there. So yeah, you can really cause some damage. Widespread damage as well, uh, which is freaking awesome. All right, so let's uh, keep going, shall we? Now it's time to go over your top comments. Remember to leave a comment down below. You never know. It could end up in a future video. So we're going to be checking out my most recent Outriders video, which is going to be right here. It says Outriders news update. Finally, play without fear of losing your inventory. New patch enters test. So if you want to check out this video, see it in the description below or most not notably just check out the channel. You'll see it on there. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, but uh, let's see what you guys have to say about this one. The Master Rookie says, a toxic type class so I can give them butterflies a taste of their medicine. That would be awesome to see. Yeah, people are already talking about the future of this game. That's why I'm kind of making this video about uh, possibly seeing a live service approach to Outriders. You know, this game or as a franchise, if that's something you guys would like to see so that there's continuous content. Daniel says, leveled techno fast. Didn't think Stagger was bad. Loving a Devastator. Oh, God. Tim Croft says, while they are still testing, I'm still in fear of losing my inventory. So when it's completely fixed, that's when, I'll, when I will start playing. Makes sense. You know, uh, this video right here that I did is basically a temporary fix you can do by uh, hard closing your game on PC. There's been also test runs perhaps on console. Some people have actually been unsuccessful as well. So that's something that is uh, noteworthy. All right, so let's see what Dat DeBoss says. He says, this bug is like the Corona. You keep getting different variants of it. No kidding. Hunter Quick says, everyone worried about losing their gear, but my character would probably benefit from it. <laughs> Has anyone tried to do like the Dark Souls tactic of uh, playing the game with no gear in the end game? My God, can you imagine? Uh, Ghost Kid says the following, dude, it's beautiful. Dude said it's beautiful. My God, your titles amaze me. I thought it would be fun. <laughs> I try to go for humorous titles sometimes, and your guys' comments can be absolutely hilarious as well. All right, love reading your comments, everyone. So that does it for this video. Thank you all so much for the love and support on the Outriders content. I am thrilled that, uh, honestly, that this game uh, has kind of been a success. I know it's had some bumpy, uh, you know, speed bumps, I guess you would say. It's had its issues, but I really, really hope that the team irons out the problems. It really does seem like they are super passionate about this game. They want to get it right. I want to see an Outriders 2. That's what I would love to see. I want to see this game continue as well. Um, but I just want to see Outriders as a stable franchise. That's the most notable thing. I know live service games are all the rave right now. Um, especially with publishers. They want the next GTA Online. You know what I mean? But uh, I just want People Can Fly to be comfortable and to be around for basically ever and to be able to pull that off and have a sustainable future in the gaming industry. And, you know, to take their time with this franchise and to do it right. That's what I want. But thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Outriders news updates and open world gaming goodness. I also posted a cyberpunk video, by the way, today if you missed it. You're curious, but thank you for watching and I will see you all next time. Take care.